Uh, we'll share today's recording with all attendees via email later this week. Um, please enter any questions you may have in the Q&A box. We'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can at the end of the webinar. Um, and if we don't get to your question today, we'll be sure to follow up with you via email. Um, so with that being said, my name is Chris Carl. Um, I'm the Slate Strategist in the Special Projects Division here at Underscore. Um, I have been in higher ed for about 10 years now. Um, I was a Slate captain, admissions counselor, you name it, I wore the hat in admissions before this. Um, I have been at Underscore since August. I spend most of my time building student and applicant-based portals, uh, but sometimes we dive into athletic portals, faculty portals, uh, you name it, chances are we could try and build a portal for it. Um, and with me today, I have uh, my good pal, Travis Carter. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I am the now non-bearded Travis Carter, Dean of Admission at Randolph College. I have finishing up my second year here at Randolph. Uh, I've been in higher ed for uh, about 10 years, much like Chris. We, we have a little bit of a background here. We've crossed paths uh, many times before. Um, so I, I've been primarily in the private school um, arena uh, with a, a stop along a, a larger D1 public along the way. And I am uh, excited to be here with you today. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna hand it over to Travis here in just a second to outline our uh, problem that was presented to us here at Underscore. Um, and Travis, take it away and tell us why we're here today. Sure, absolutely. So um, I, I know we only have an hour. I could actually spend probably the entire time talking about why we're here today and, and you know what, what we're faced with. Uh, at Randolph. So when I arrived just a couple of years ago at the at Randolph College, we were um, having some con some discussions about making the switch to Slate. So we used a previous CRM. We weren't happy with it, and and then we made the decision upon my arrival to let's let's get Slate. Let's jump right in and let's have the entire campus use it. And that of course meant uh, including our athletics office as well. So. Um, Ultimately, that meant doing away with a partnership with Front Rush that our athletic department had come to, I would say, love. They leaned on Front Rush uh, very heavily for their recruitment process. And I've equated to taking Front Rush away from an athletic department to kind of like taking an iPhone away from a 15 year old. They, they, they really didn't know, um, you know how they were going to move forward with, with everything they were trying to do. Of course, you couple that with COVID and suddenly, um, you know, you know, things are, are looking bleak. So um, what we initially thought we were going to do when we, when we brought Slate on was, all right, well, let's train our athletic department to use Slate the same way that we train our admission staff to use Slate. You know, that we'll give them all the same capabilities. We'll, you know, of course, you know, limit uh, a little bit of what they have to do or what the, their abilities, the capabilities they have um, here and there, but let's let's give them the, the entire package and let them learn how to use it. So we started that uh, early in the fall um, last year, and it, we had a few road bumps. Um, as you can guess, the, the Department of Athletics, their main job is to, um, to coach and to recruit, uh, much like us, but they don't spend as much time using the CRM um, as we do. So we found that the, the athletic department wasn't quite um, as user savvy with Slate as we would have liked them to be. So at that point is when we started to entertain the underscore team about, you know, how can we do something here for our staff um, that allows the, the department of, of athletics to be able to see, um, you know, all the communications that we have going out to students and the admissions office can see the communications the athletics uh, office has going out. Um, they can see where students are in the funnel. They can see when they're coming to visit campus. Um, and it gives us, we, we've designed our app portal to give us a little bit more control on the communication process. So um, it's not to say that we're playing big brother and you know, athletics can't do anything without our approval. Um, we just control the communication. So if they submit an email, we get a chance to review it to make sure it's in line with what we're, the message that we're sending out. Um, but it also gives both offices an opportunity to, um, to share communications with students. So before we got this portal and you know, we did away with Front Rush, uh, the majority of our communications with the Department of Athletics was 
uh, spreadsheets and word of mouth communication. Have you talked to the student? Where are they? Are they coming to visit? What have they told you? Um, and a lot of things can get lost in the conversation. You don't write it down. You're not tracking it somewhere. We found in our first year when we, uh, when the coaching staff had front rush that it, we were not getting an efficient communication process out between the two offices. So um, we made the decision to do away with front rush. We went with the underscore team. We reached out to Chris and, and company and said, look, this is probably unlike any request that you've ever had before, but um, we want to basically mimic front rush in slate. And the, the process started to unfold. We, we started to take snapshots of what coaches and, and the athletic staff were really enjoying about front rush. And we were able to implement it in slate. So they essentially have front rush, but it's powered by slate. Great. And again, sure. I could I could go on a lot longer about all of the things that we have here, but um, you know, the um, I'll stop right there and, and let Chris jump back in for a second. Sure. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through most of these bullet points. I'm going to show you the actual portal itself. So I'm actually going to stop sharing this. I'm going to bring up the portal on the other end here. Give me just one second. I'm going to bring that on up. All right. All right, Travis, can you see the see the portal there? Yes, sir. Cool. Awesome. I like All right. Pink so what you too. guys see here, this is the landing page for the athletics portal. So what we decided to do here based on the information Travis provided, um, what they were looking for and how they were going to go about doing it in terms of what level of access they wanted their coaches to be able to have. Um, and that kind of boiled down to just being able to see their information. Um, we decided to go with a custom data set portal. Um, and this is kind of the route we've taken with most of our, uh, you know, data set portals. So, um, we can customize this based on your level of access, security, and the needs, basically. Um, what we do is we use a configurable joins query to say, essentially, if this field equals this that's on the data set record, then show this student. Um, so we would build that query out for you as well, just like we did with Randolph. Um, <clears throat> the nice part about a data set portal, you can use your single sign-on if you're interested in it. Um, we can tie it right into the single sign-on. Um, another thing to mention is we can limit the query however we want to only show this amount of students based on maybe an entry term um, or if they've submitted an application, anything at that point. Um, or, you know, one thing that we did was we have it to where their status is, is not inactive, essentially, in terms of their priority. That's when we're having students show here. Uh, but also then we're bringing in people who maybe said that they wanted to be interested in basketball just on an inquiry form, uh, also on the application. So just in terms of an interest, the coaches wanted to be able to see those students and parse through them themselves. Um, so, you know, that's kind of how we went about building this from the bones. So this is our landing page. When they log in, this is what they're gonna see. Uh, so right at the very top, you'll see uh, Chris Calvin. It's kind of my alter ego, I guess, if you will. It's my chess record. Uh, I'm a men's basketball coach. So right now for men's basketball, I got 241 total prospects, uh, 44 total applicants for this current round. That's something that could be updated, you know, year over year over year. Um, I got 22 total admits and 12 deposits. So right off the bat, you're kind of looping in some of the uh, more higher level quantitative data, if you will. Um, and these are using, again, you know, configurable joins and we're, we're looping the information in. So every time they log in, it's going to be an up-to-date number uh, that they're going to be seeing there. So uh, another thing that's nice about having on the landing page here is the ability to have this announcement. So I just threw this arbitrary one in there that enrollment deposits are due May 1st. Many of the coaches already know that, but you can use this throughout the year. You can multi-purpose it through uh, application deadlines. Um, if you don't put a filter on this, it would show to all the coaches. But if you wanted to get something across specifically to, to Chris Calvin, you can put a filter on it that says if the coach is men's basketball, show this uh, notification here as well. But you can use that um, throughout the year. Um, I also have down here just you know quick references to the inquiry form. So this first inquiry form here would just be a quick link if you're going to 
copy and paste it in an email. Maybe you're talking to a student on the phone right now. You know, they think they might be interested and you say, hey, are you, you want me to send you an inquiry form? You can just copy this link right here, send it in an email and, and be on your way. Um, another concern that they expressed was on the inquiry form, there's the ability to opt in or out of text messages. Uh, a lot of the coaches didn't feel comfortable filling that out themselves. So we created, you know, the option here to fill the form out on behalf of the student and it takes that part out. Uh, so that they're, they're not consenting to receiving text messages on behalf of a student. Um, you'll see here that it would loop in the coach name so that they, you know, you always know you're logged in as yourself. Um, and then you see you got this nav bar over here on the left. All of this comes out of the box responsive. Uh, it's mobile responsive as well. So all everything you're about to see is, is built essentially mobile first. Um, and it can, you know, also come across to desktops as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take you through some of the tabs because this is where it really gets cool and, you know, kind of mimics some of that functionality. Um, I guess I'll preface it just by saying, you know, we got hot prospects and all prospects. All that means is hot prospects is somebody who's being recruited. All prospects is somebody who wrote um, that they're interested in this sport. So that would be the larger overall uh, group. Uh, we did go ahead and hide the student names just for confidentiality, so you will not see uh, student information over here on the left. But what there would be was you would also see a, uh, a student name here that would be a hyperlink that's going to take them to a pop-up about that student in just a second. But this is basically what the entire portal is founded off of, is this dynamic data tables here. Um, this can be customized. So right now you're seeing all of the recruiting student, recruited students for men's basketball. Um, and this would loop in for every sport on the same page. You know, basically it's gonna recognize who's logged in and show those students. So this functionality of the data tables is, is something that's, that's really neat here. Um, so just some of the overall features of this data table. Um, uh, we actually got a lot of questions about not being able to replicate the search that is built into Slate in the top right. You know, kind of the, the search that filters itself. And as you write S, it gives you everything that starts with S and M, you know, and then it starts to spell out Smith and it gets smaller and smaller of a list. Uh, well, this search bar has that. So although I hid the student names, I'm going to go ahead and search. Maybe I want to see all of my post players here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start searching post and it's gonna give me all of my post players. And you know, so all these positions here that I post. So this search goes throughout the entire data table. If I wanted to find everybody whose status is inquiry, I can type inquiry. Um, I don't know if it's gonna work because I'm not in there, but yep, so there's my underscore. So I'm starting to type underscore, that's my test records name. So you'll see that it's, it's basically a dynamic search that's going to give you whatever you're, you're looking to see there. Um, all of these columns are completely sortable. So let's just say that you're looking to sort this, um, you know, alphabetically, you can go, uh, you know, ascending, descending, you know, you could do all sorts of sorting here that you're looking to do. Um, obviously, these are all yes, because they're all hot prospects. So you have that level of control over what you're seeing right off the bat. Um, you can also then come on down here. This was something that the Randolph athletic team really needed. So I was never a user of Front Rush myself, but they expressed that you could build these filters to be able to see what you're looking for. So down here on the bottom, basically anything that has more than one date. So you're never gonna see name down here because it's kind of redundant to filter on date, I mean on name, um, because it's a one, one-to-one -one value. So let's say I'm looking for students who are applicants. I can just click that there and you'll see that I'm already down to, to 38 entries. Um, let's say then that I'm looking to see those that are decided. Um, you know, now I'm down to 34. And if I wanna see those that are admitted, I got 19. Um, if I wanna see those that are admitted and deposited, you know, I can click there and it'll show me the 29 who are admitted or deposited. And you can come up here and check to see, um, you know, that the decision is admitted or positive. Um, you can also save these filters if that's something that you're using this over and over again. 
Um, but we find most times because of the way that these are built, it's it's not that bad to come in here and just build it each time. So you can uh, you know filter the data anytime you want. We also got a lot of questions about coaches wanting to take the information with them when they go places, download lists. Um, this is something that can be quite cumbersome if you're using um, you know Slate just as a user um, for a coach. Um, so you can come up here and you'll see these buttons and these float across all, all of the tables here. Um, so the very first one I'll show you is export. So if you were to click export here, you get the option to download the list as it stands right now. So you can filter it and then download the filtered list as a CSV, uh, an Excel, or a PDF document. Take it on the go, take it however you want. Um, or you can remove all of the filters and just print the entire list, um, you know, bring the CSV with you, uh, bring the Excel with you. Um, you can also come over here and print it and it'll just give you this nice printable list, if you will. Um, so, you know, you can take the printable list with you um, and, you know, that's a little less formatted, gives you a little less customization over it, but um, you still have the option to print it as well. Uh, if you want to hide some columns, just like I did with the student name and some of their other identifying information, you can come here and every uh, column that's listed here in a data table, um, you can either show or hide. So let's say right now I want to hide status. You'll see that right behind it, it comes and goes. Um, and so you can, sh let's say you're only looking for the, ad um, the admission information. You can hide all this other basketball related information or whatever it may be. And just look at the columns that you, that you need to see at that time. Um, so it is paginated as well. So you'll see here that you can go all the way over to, we got five tabs here. Um, and this is normally much wider, but you can also scroll across the X here um, and you know view the entire table that way. Uh, this table actually does respond mobily. So although it's more made for desktop, the table itself, you can still get this exact same functionality uh, on a mobile, mobile device. Uh, another thing that the Randolph team wanted to be able to see was, this is probably more relevant when we look forward to getting back to regular life. We got events on campus. We got a big open house upcoming. Um, who's coming to my events? Or who came to my event in previous life, or in a previous existence? And you know, we, we wanna be able to reach out to that group specifically. So what we did was, again, harness configurable joins, and we did that one-to-many relationship. And, oh, never mind. We're gonna go back a step because I didn't explain to you the student record at all. So let's say I am in here and I'm talking with underscore applicant because that is my uh, test record that's in here, but also a highly sought after basketball recruit. So I'm in here, I clicked on their name in that uh, the hyperlink that I mentioned before. So now I'm looking at information for underscore applicant. So you'll see this addresses a lot of the information that um, that the Randolph team was looking for. So right off the bat here, you'll see my contact information. Let's say I wanna congratulate underscore test on a great game. I have access to his email address here, which if you click this, opens it up in your preferred email client and all, brings in the BCC to put it on the student's slate record. Um, so it'll put it right on their timeline. Um, I actually don't have a phone number, but you would be able to see my phone number there as well. Um, you'll see my program, my entry term, uh, my high school name, and that's weirdly actually my real address. I don't know why I put that in there, but um, you'll, you'll have access to all of their contact information right here. Uh, and then over on the right, some of the information that they wanted to see was what their primary position was. Uh, and then also, are they a verbal commit to, to Randolph? So these can be also customized for the entire, for any sport, whoever's logged in, um, they could be able to see this here. So right here, you'll see the most recent interaction. And so for my student, I emailed myself on January 21st. Uh, I said this was a test um, and I use this to test this feature. So basically what this section is right here, the most recent interactions, these are coach specific interactions so that when I, as Chris Calvin log in, I'm able to see when was the last time that I or one of my colleagues, you know, maybe one of my assistant coaches spoke with this student. Um, and so that would be what would loop into this table here. Um, and you can log in interaction by clicking right here and it'll bring up our interaction form. 
Um, and you would just type in your subjects and your comments and it would get looped right into the uh, most recent interactions table. Um, the next piece here would be the update students info. So this was one of the more challenging items, I will say. So a lot of folks who use like the athletics portal 1.0 found the post method and, and you know things like that, but it's very tricky to get it to work. Um, and in order to have a lot of these other bells and whistles, if you will, you, you kind of got to go a different route in terms of building the portal. So what we were able to do actually is take this link right here and loop into the actual sport table that lives on the student record within Slate. So you'll see that this right here looks awfully familiar. Um, so what this does is it loops in that table, uh, but you can go in here and update any of the fields that live on their record. Um, and we also received a question, how does somebody get taken off of the list when they're no longer being recruited? Uh, we have the query built that it's only pulling in high, normal, and low priority. So if somebody's in here as inactive, they're no longer getting pulled into the table um, and they're gonna drop off the list as well. Um, so if I go back here to the, uh, to the student's record, uh, they also wanted the ability to be able to register for, them for a visit. Let's say, you know, I call underscore, I got, got them at the height of their excitement. I say, hey, you wanna come for a visit to campus? Um, if you click that right there, it'll bring us over to the daily on visit campus registration. So I can actually see which dates are available. Um, what this does is it allows admissions and athletics to be able to see who's coming, when, is there availability, and be able to follow up with those students as well. So I'm actually going to register on behalf of the student um, and, and make sure that they, they get in there and they're coming to campus. Uh, as Travis mentioned at the beginning, the coaches also wanted to be able to see the general communication that's going out to a student. And so that can be seen right here. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're looping in, these are solely emails. So this is looping in emails. These right here are my test cases, if you will. Um, but these are gonna loop in the external emails. So if they request later to be able to send out, let's say um, you know, an email to those that attended a, um, uh, an AAU tournament, they can then go in and see, oh, okay, they opened that or it was just sent so they haven't opened it or they did click on a link that was in there. So this is gonna loop in that, that email table there. Um, yeah, so that actually rounds out the student record. So as I was mentioning before, uh, we did go ahead and we built out a table for them that harnesses configurable joins the one to many based on uh, form registration, so the events as the base. And so you'll see here, like these are, again, we hid the students' names, but you would be able to see their names, some more identifying information about who's coming, have the same functionality with the pop-up. Um, so this, these could be basically who's coming to a My Wildcat Day, um, you know, or a Let Wisdom Rise Scholarship Day. Again, you know, you would be able to see who's coming in an open house, uh, for an upcoming day. Uh, so let's say we wanted to see who's coming for an admitted student day, who has attended. This would be the list of students that would show there. Uh, you get the same functionality across all of the data tables. Um, so you could be able to print this list, export this if you want, let's say one of your current students to call them and say, hey, can't wait to see you uh, for the upcoming event. You can search it in a year where there's more events upcoming. You know, you can have a longer data table and be able to see some of those. Um, you know, some of the names that are upcoming, but, uh, you know, the, basically it's the same functionality, but we're just saying one event registration per row. Um, and again, we can customize all of the columns that are shown here uh, to individual sports, uh, but also with the events table as opposed to with uh, the prospects table. Um, another thing that was very important to the Randolph team was being able to have uh, contests. So maybe those coaches that are uh, part of AAU feeder programs or at local high schools. So me as Chris Calvin, I don't have many contacts, but you'll see that I have my other alter ego as CC Carl in here as my contacts list. Um, so this is another related data set um, whose parent data set is the athletics data set. Uh, and basically what it does is it allows the coach to go in there and say, hey, this is my contact. 
you know, I want to be able to see all these in one place. So, you know, here's basically the data table. So this could be as extensive as you want. Um, again, the same functionality, but what these are is uh, contacts, not students and not events. So it's, you know, it's um, looping those, those in. Then we have some administrative tasks, if you will. So the very first one is very relevant. So if I go out and I'm at a tournament and I come back and I have a list of students uh, that I wanna get thrown into the database as my recruits, basically because it's a custom data set, you have the ability to upload materials through a form to the data set, uh, to the data set field. And so what this is, is it's an embedded form and you come back and you choose your file and you can upload that. And we have through the form submission, the slate captain being notified uh, that a new list was uploaded. And basically the slate captain then goes in, grabs the list as the material, can put it into whatever format they need to, and then they can um, upload it as, um, you know, into the data set. And then once that's completed, the coach would then see the list uh, in their current uh, fields, in their current data table. Um, also, the ability to send an email. So as those of us that work in Slate often, you know, you don't necessarily want to have um, as many hands in the deliver module as probably people want to have in there. Um, but I believe with Front Rush, the ability to send mass emails out on behalf of the coaches was there. So that was something that we decided probably wasn't the best idea with the overarching access that comes with the deliver module in Slate. Um, so what we did is we created basically a communications request form. And what this does is it allows the coach to say, okay, here's who I want to send this, this email to. So this could say, you know, I want to send it to my applicants, or I could want to send it to my applicants who attended the AAU tournament. Um, and, you know, that would be part of the form field. Also, we're going to say, here's when we want it to be sent. So today's the 27th, let's say I wanted to go on the 30th. Um, so that would also be part of the form submission. Um, and then each coach had email headers. So me as men's basketball, I only have one email header, but some had up to four or five. So basically they would be able to see some choices here, choose from one, and it would populate right here so that they're getting the full sense of, oh, okay, this is what this email is gonna look like but it also gives the slate captain who is in the deliver module, who's gonna receive this request email, an idea of, okay, let's use this template to send this email out to give the coach exactly what they want. So they're gonna see that there. And then they can come down here in this form text field and type exactly what they wanna be in the email. So they can write, hey, name, um, come visit campus. And then, you know, the slate captain can format that to be merge field. Um, however they want it to look to be completely on brand with what's normally going out. Um, but, you know, once they submit this form, this goes to the slate captain and, you know, they, they're able to schedule that email. It does a couple of things. One, it gives the coaches the ability to send out their mass emails um, through admissions, but it also allows admissions to have complete control over their uh, communications flow and make sure that they're not hitting students two, three times over any given, uh, you know, day span so that they can keep it nice and clean to their students. Um, and then the one last form you'll see here, this is just to be able to add a contact to the contacts data table, if you will. Um, so if I come back and I have an AAU coach, I can add them here and it adds them to that data set. Um, so that would be kind of the last administrative tab uh, form that they could be able to do. Um, so with that being said, that's basically it, but that's not to say that that's all that this can do. That is what the Randolph team needed this to be able to do. So um, I was going to hand it back over to Travis now that I've showed it all to you uh, and see how he's used this so far, how it's helped and how he envisions it helping in the future. Famous words of 2021, I'm on mute. So um, yeah, it, it's, so it has been beyond my wildest dreams what the underscore team was able to create for us here is kind of a, um, a happy medium between the Office of Admissions and the athletic department. 
Uh, just in the, the few short months that we've been using this, that it's been live and the coaches have been able to access it, um, it, it has increased collaboration across the offices. Um, we, we know what they're doing. They know what we're doing. So um, when I first arrived at the college, I got a lot of, um, you know, you need to tell us when, when this event is or when this email is going out, we'll encourage our students, our, our recruits to sign up. Um, I'd much rather be uh, be able to tell them ahead of time about this event or that event or you know, whatever, maybe a special promotion uh, that's, that's going on. I, I'd like to be able to communicate that with them ahead of time. So now we're able to be on the same page. And like I said, it's been just a, a, a few short months here, but um, compared to where we, where we were with the, the spreadsheets and just um, the, trying to bank on emails being exchanged and, and hoping that word gets to the right person and, and vice versa, uh, it, it has been, um, you know, just a godsend for our office and, and for the college. Um, and I, I think that I speak for um, not just the Office of Admission and the Athletics Office, but I think the, the, the senior administration sees it as um, such a valuable tool um, to, to increase collaboration here across the offices. Um, and being a small, smaller private school, um, those of you that that of course have, have experience or are currently at a, a smaller private school, you know that the coaching staff is kind of an extension of the Office of Admissions. We're all doing the same thing. So um, to be able to have that communication back and forth and everybody to be on the same page has, um, has made our jobs in the Office of Admissions. And I, I think the athletic staff would say too, uh, uh, infinitely easier as a, a replacement to, to Front Rush. Great, thanks Travis. Um, I realized I was a bit premature putting the questions box up there, um, but can, you can see that, right, Travis? Say that one more time. You can see the questions right yes. there? All right, cool. So, yeah, so we did have some questions come in. I'd love to be able to answer some of these. Um, so this one comes from, from Millsaps College. We already answered what platform they moved from, um, but since it was Front Rush, uh, I think Travis and I can both speak to a little bit of some of the ease of transition from that platform. I'll let Travis talk about some of his, uh, yeah. you know, some of the data coming over. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, you know, in terms of building this, we didn't run into one thing that Front Rush could do that we didn't find at least a suitable workaround for so that the data was in Slate. Um, so basically the ease of transition, once it's been built this first time, if you will, um, it has it would be easy to replicate over and over again, essentially. So yeah, sure. We all went through our growing pains, figuring out how to mimic front rush, if you will. Uh, but you know, I think from our end, in terms of being able to replicate it over and over again, um, most of those hurdles have already been, been reached, so. Yeah, there was, uh, there was some skepticism from our athletics office about you know, how do we get everything that we have in front rush and move it over to this athletics portal? So we were in a pretty good position in that we were still under contract with front rush. So we were able to log in and, and basically tell every coach, all right, find out what it is you like specifically about front rush. What is it that you can't live without? Um, take notes, send it to us and we'll get it to the underscore team and, 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 and they'll try to work around this and, and see if that's an option for you. So um, I, our coaching staff, they were logging into Front Rush. They're, they're taking screenshots. I, I think we got a couple of pictures with their cell phones. Um, I really like this. I want to be able to do that. And, um, you know, the, the underscore team was just uh, fantastic in, in their ability to, to replicate what we, what we were using in Front Rush before. And as far as exporting the data that we have in Front Rush and, and everything that, that, that was in there, um, our operations staff was able to work with the athletics office and create a generic spreadsheet. So basically download everything that you need out of front rush. We will format it into this spreadsheet the way we need it to upload it into the athletics portal. So um, I don't think we lost, if we did, it was virtually a, a small amount of information, but I think everything that we had in front rush, we were able to take out and migrate over to the athletics portal. Great. Um, it looks like the next question was already addressed, um, but basically, let's see. Um, so here's a great question. Um, this comes from Missouri Western State University. I'd like a general idea of how long it takes to build out an athletic portal. Um, so this was you. This took us 
probably about three months by the time it was done. Um, you know, I think since we got a lot of these kinks worked out early on, uh, we'd be looking at two, two and a half months uh, to be able to build something like this out now. I will say it was much quicker than what I anticipated. <laughs> That's fair. Um, we have another question here for, is there the ability to offer or track athletic scholarships? Uh, basically, I mean, if it is a field that you can query on in Slate, I mean, you know, we'd need to see how you're offering scholarships currently, um, but at least with the ability to track the athletic scholarships, if it exists in Slate or can exist in Slate, we can have it populate in, this, in the portal. Um, our coach is able to create athletic events in order to track what athletes they have seen at which tournament slash game. So yes and no. So we went about doing that through um, uploading the lists and we're gonna have uh, the ability to query off of it based on the source. Um, so they're gonna use the source uh, and origin sources to be able to track those students. But there's no one, there's nothing that says that you can't do it based on events. Uh, that was just the route we went this way, but it could be done either way with creating events that live in Slate. Um, and then we have another question about how many data sets are involved in the system. So um, basically there's two custom data sets. There's the athletics data set, which is the users, the coaches. Um, and then off of that, there's also the, uh, the athletic contact data set. And that's a child data set for the parent data set of the athletics coaches. So um, let's see here, what other we got here. Um, so basically, so here's a couple other questions based on the level of maintenance you anticipate with this custom portal. So I can speak specifically to how underscore builds portals. Um, we build them with the non, you, you know, SQL, non HTML, CSS user in mind. So all of this basically is using custom HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript to make all of those things run. But they aren't gonna have to worry about that year over year over year. So we provide a portal manual for all of our projects when they're finished that basically say, if Travis were to step in tomorrow, having never seen a Slate portal, uh, how would he go about accessing this? And that would be in the manual. Then we're gonna give a walkthrough that shows, okay, Here's how you're gonna update some of these more custom items. Uh, but one thing that we include in both the manual and the walkthrough uh, would be cycle prep. So for Travis's specifically, there's really not much that year over year you'd have to change. We would just wanna then change the filters that are pulling in whatever entry terms or app rounds, however we're filtering it uh, so that we're filtering out some of the old, old records and, and keeping them up to date, so. Um, let's see, so this might be a question more for Travis, although I think most of us that have done any sort of uh, import from Front Rush can speak to this. So um, somebody asked, do you have a problem with duplicates moving into Slate, so? Uh, not really, um, you know, there's, there's the occasional duplicate that we have to weed out, but our operations team um, does a good job of, of managing that each day. Um, yeah, it, it's very minimal, um, you know, I. I, I can't imagine, you know, being a smaller school, I can't imagine that um, it would be so widespread at a much larger university that there would be um, so many duplicates. Um, so no, um, there's, there's the occasional, but it's, it's incredibly manageable. Sure. Um, so we have, we have another question here that's, after recruits enroll, can coaches manage a database of their current roster and then manage alumni after students graduate? And the answer is most likely yes. This is Randolph's first year in Slate. So that's the vision with this is to be able to manage their current roster um, and then be able to keep them in there uh, through the alumni state. So um, yeah, so I think, you know, that's, that's the end goal with this. Um, and like I said, this is what suited Randolph's needs at this time. That's not to say that this is the end all um, for what's possible um, with, with this type of athletics portal. So um, other than that, I think that's probably 
all the questions that we have time to get through today, just being mindful of everybody's time. Um, there's my contact information. If you have any other questions specifically for me, uh, Travis as well. Um, but I, I thank you guys. Again, we'll send a recording out later this week. Uh, I thank Travis for his time and, and thank you everybody for, for attending. Thanks everyone.